we are going to continue today with the next chapter about ceramics yeah about ceramics so so far most of the discussion about material properties and processing that we have so we have so far covered uh, yes they they apply to most materials but many of those points of discussions are usually applied in metal type uh, in metal type uh, materials yeah? yeah especially because in metal type material you could do this cold work and then uh, heat treatment annealing etc yeah to in, in order in order to form the, the metal into various shape and then strengthen it to strengthening the structure etc <clears throat> but other type of material for example ceramics or also later a polymer and composite have also their own specific properties yeah, which may require then different types of processing as well so in the today hopefully uh, this, uh, within the next three hours we are going to finish uh, discussing about the structural properties of ceramics and then some application of ceramics yeah. so the issues to address first is the structure of ceramic materials how do they differ from those of metals and do they have also point defects for example yeah as a matter of fact yes ceramics has many point defects because of the introduction of impurities and we can make if for example with metals with alloy of metals maybe the type of uh, the, the, the the number of the metals element that you could mix to form an alloy may be limited but in ceramics you could have complex uh, <clears throat> complex mixture of compounds of ceramics yeah? and this is you do the for example you, that we can introduce point defects that other types of ceramics can be introduced to those point defects and therefore alter the material properties so how are the point defects in ceramics differ than those in metals? <clears throat> in impurities, how are they accommodated in the lattice and how do they affect the properties? So in terms of mechanical properties, what special provision or tests are made for ceramic material? So in ceramic bonding, yeah, in ceramic material, the bonding mostly is ionic however some have also covalent bonding and this bonding of course whether it is ionic or covalent will depend on the elements that make up that uh, ceramic compound so when the materials or the elements that make up that ceramic has percentage of ionic character with, with they have a large difference of electronegativity, then they will have higher percentage of ionic character. That is why in most of cases they have a mix of covalent of ionic and covalent bonding, depending on how large difference of electronegativity the elements that make up that ceramics has. Okay, for example, if <clears throat> in the calcium fluoride case. Yeah, since calcium, for example, is in the 2A column, while fluoride is in the 7A column, the calcium has electronegativity of 1, while fluorine has electronegativity of 4. So they have large difference in uh, electronegativity, and hence that they have also a higher percentage of uh, ionic bonding character. While on the other hand, silicon carbide, which is also a ceramic, they are both of them are of the same column within the periodic table. And hence, uh, they have similar electronegativity. <clears throat> yeah, uh, not that many difference, 1.8 to 2.5. Therefore, the dominant bonding is covalent bonding instead of ionic bonding. 
Okay, <clears throat> ionic bonding structure. The stable structure will maximize the number of nearest uh, oppositely charged neighbor. Yeah, for example, uh, the, max, the number of nearest oppositely charged neighbor. In this case, for example, this shows an unstable ionic bonding because the positive charge ion is small and surrounded by four uh, large ionic, uh, uh, large negatively charged ion, yeah, with the, some spaces still affected uh, in between. Then when it's just fit, when the, when the positive ion just fit inside the space between the large negatively charged ion, then it will be just be stable. Or it may be a little bit larger, then, but so that there, there will be still some small space between the negatively charged atomic ions, then it is also still stable. What also matters is the charge neutrality. The net charge in the structure should be zero. So for example, if <coughs> we have uh, calcium fluoride here, calcium is releasing its two electrons in its valence shell, yeah, which make it to be posit uh, positively charged and with a charge of two plus. So in order that the charge is neutralized, the, the, the total charge, the net charge is zero. When it bonds, yeah, when it is bonding to, to, uh, to fluorine ions, fluorine anions, yeah, it has to uh, bind to two of these fluorine anions because fluorine anions, it has only it, it will capture only one electron to its valence uh, shell, yeah, which uh, makes it to be a uh, single uh, neg negatively charged in one, one minus. So it needs two uh, fluorine anions in order that the whole charge is neutralized. So calcium two plus need to be in, to be bonded with two fluorine minus anions. So we have calcium fluorine Calcium difluoride, yeah, calcium difluoride. So the general form will be AMX3, and the M and P here determine the number of M and P will be determined by charge neutrality. So this is what is important in ionic bonding. The crystalline structure itself, the same concept can be applied to ionic solids in general. This is, for example, for uh, salt, yeah, rock salt. <clears throat> sodium chloride <laughs> structure, where sodium is the cation and chlorine is the anion. The diameter of the sodium is 0 0.102 nanometer, while chlorine has a diameter, uh, sorry, a, a radius of 0 0.181 nanometer. Yeah. The anion is usually larger than the, the cation. So it will make a structure like this, <clears throat> like, like a simple cubic structure. Yeah. Then <clears throat> other ceramics which has similar structure like the sodium chlorine, sodium chloride ions, uh, sodium chloride uh, compound is magnesium oxide and iron oxide. This one, okay. In the, uh, as we see here, the M and P is one and one. Yeah, Magnesium one, oxygen is one. Yeah. Because <clears throat> magnesium releases two electrons, but oxygen also captures two electrons. So that's why they have charge neutrality. The net charge is zero. Similarly with uh, iron oxide, in this case, if iron oxide, the, this iron, iron has different kind, it can release um, different numbers of electrons. In this case, however, it releases two electrons to be uh, iron two plus, when oxygen captures the two electrons and becomes oxygen two minus, and they combine as iron oxide, having solid sodium chloride structure like this. <clears throat> so here we have each oxygen atom, the large atom here, has neighboring six magnesium two plus. Yeah, one, two, three, four, five, and six here. And we have also another type of crystalline structure, which is AX crystalline structure. 
yeah, uh, which include sodium chloride also, cesium chloride, and then zinc black. Uh, this structure is when the two atoms, yeah, the two elements that make up the ionic bonding, has more or less similar radius. Yeah, for example, here, <coughs> cesium, the cesium chloride structure, yeah, it is uh, like particularly similar like a, a body center cube. The cesium chloride uh, ion release its one angle single electron become cesium positive. The radius is 0 0.17, zero nanometer, and chlorine captures one single electron. The chlorine anion has a size of the radius, radius is 0 0.181 nanometer. So the ratio of these two radii is 0 0.99. So almost close, almost, yeah, almost one, almost the same means. So it means in this case, each of the cesium <coughs> uh, plus here has a neighboring eight chlorine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. If we compare with the sodium chlorine, sodium chloride structure, the rock salt structure in this case. So each of the sodium plus has six neighboring chlorine ion. One, two, three, four, five, six, yeah. So this is with, with AX crystal structure. The cation is surrounded by eight anion. So again, with rock salt structure, the, it happens of course usually when the cation has smaller radii compared to the uh, chlorine uh, compared to the anions, similar like this one, right? The cation, the positively charged ion, has smaller radii, much uh, relatively smaller radii compared to the anions. While in AX crystal structure, it, this occurs when the radii between the two ions, uh, acacian and anions, <coughs> is as they are almost similar. This is zinc blend structure. The example are zinc oxide, zinc selenide. Zinc oxide is a, also a semiconductor. Zinc selenide, not zinc selenide, sorry, zinc sulfuride. Yeah, zinc sulfuride and silicon carbide, yeah, something like this. So here, the cation is zinc, surrounded by uh, how many? One, two, three, four, yeah, four sulfuric, sulfuric atoms. So sulfuric atom two minus. So as we see here, the structure is almost similar like a tetrahedral structure, yeah. If we look, uh, we take a look into one, one of this cell of one cation, zinc surrounded by four of the anions. Similarly, zinc oxide also has similar structure, which with uh, zinc two plus cation is surrounded by four neighboring oxygen two minus anions. Then we have AX two crystal structure. So this is AX crystal structure, and we have now. AX2 crystal structure, where the M is one, the P is two. Yeah, in the in the uh, in the in the valence, in the stoichiometric uh, uh, number. So, for example, calcium fluoride we have mentioned in the previous slide. Then uranium uranyl oxide, thorium oxide, zirconia, yeah, zirconium oxide, ceria, yeah, is also cerium oxide. Yeah, in this case, the cations are located in the cubic side. So here, you see here. Yeah, uh, inside the cubic. Then we have another crystal structure, ABX3. Uh, this is some structure which is uh, currently quite famous, yeah? becoming more uh, famous because of the various application of ABX3 crystal structure ceramics. Pair of sky are, is among the type of this ceramics that has ABX crystal structure. So this consists of three different elements that make up the ceramics. For example, a complex oxide of barium titanate. Barium titanate. <coughs> the barium itself releases two electrons, become barium two plus cation. Titanium is releasing uh, four electron, become four plus while oxygen release uh, capture two electrons each, so become two, uh, two, two, o, o, o two minus. 
So if we see here, see, annotate. So barium, this could be uh, expanded in barium plus and titanium ox like this to minus, right? So here, three times uh, two minus is six minus, right? Six minus six. And so in order uh, to be minus two, it has to uh, be cup, uh, coupled with four plus. So the titanium here, the, uh, the, the valence is four plus. The, the electron that is being released from its valence band is valence shell is four plus. Okay. And barium titanate is considered as piezoelectric material. Well, maybe you we have we have heard a little bit about piezoelectric in sensor and measurement, although not yet explained uh, thoroughly. So piezoelectric material is a material which can convert uh, voltage immediately into mechanical stress or vice versa, mechanical stress into voltage change. Why? Because it has this uh, dielectricity, and dielectricity, and not only dielectricity, but ferroelectricity and piezoelectricity, because it has the capability to separate charge, yeah, to separate charge, uh, plus and one side, negative to other side, yeah, to, to create a potential difference. So this is the structure of one of this example of barium titanate. The barium uh, two plus is this one, the blue part yeah, in the corner of the cubic. The titanium cation is at the middle of the cube, while the oxygen anion is in the face or of the cubes. There are six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven. Okay, so now we are going to discuss about the mechanical properties of ceramic. Ceramics are usually more brittle than metal. So what is the definition of brittle? And brittle is basically, we can, if we can define as the opposite of uh, ductile. ductile yeah? In metal, it's ductile, right? Metal can be formed. We can uh, apply bending form without having to break that metal. So it does bend, like when, we, when for example, spoon. But the metal structure itself doesn't bend because it has this ability to have uh, dislocation motion, as we have learned in the previous chapter, so that it, so that it can deform into plastic deformation, a permanent deformation shape. But ceramics is not so. Yeah, so when we apply large stress, either bending stress or axial stress, it is very difficult to 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 have to have, to have strain to be, to extend, and it cannot deform plastically. So. When you surpass a certain value of the yield strength or the cell strength, it, 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 it just break, break, and then the structure will, uh, be, will fracture. Yeah, that is what happens with ceramics. So this can be seen in many things in our surrounding, yeah, in at our house, for example, like 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 tile or glass. Okay, glass, for example, if you try to hit a glass by rock, rock, for example, when your hitting force is above certain threshold, the glass will just break. It will just shatter and into pieces, for example, unless if the glass is made into a composite. <clears throat> uh, but with metal, for example, if you if you hit by, 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 by stone, for example, or by anything, a certain force, it may it, it, it will not break. It may just uh, deform. Yeah, it will just deform plastically. Yeah, with, uh, like for example, the metal in your car, in your uh, motorcycle, for example, it will just deform and not break. With the glass, on the other hand, if a very strong force hit it, it will just break and then shatter into pieces. And this is one of the example that. Ceramics, glass is a type of ceramic, silicon, silicon dioxide. <clears throat> ceramics are more brittle than metals. And why is that? 
So <clears throat> again, to the theory of deformation, that we know that in metal, deformation occurs. Deformation motion occurs quite easily in the slip page, in the slip planes, right? The slip planes occurs because of the, when the frequency, frequency uh, bond, when there is a, when there is a defect, and then the, 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 the atomic bond breaks and deform, break and reform again at different places. So that then the slide, for example, the plane defects can move from one from the inner part of the material going to the outside until to the edge, and then we see it externally as deformation. So deform this deformation occurs can occur along the slip planes, which may mostly occurs in crystalline structure of metal. However, in ionic solids, the slippage is very difficult because of the plus minus charge between the elements. Yeah? Too much energy needed to move one onion past another onion. Yeah. Uh, to, to pass another, because what? In order that the onion can move, for example, this is one onion, this is another onion. Uh, in order that this onion can move through it, move past it, it has to, uh, it has to, what do you call it? Um, to be able to go above the rep uh, rep uh, repulsive force by this engine, right? Because they are of the same charge, similarly negative charge. Negative, negative, they will repel each other. So in order to be able to move, pass through it, yeah, it has to go through this repuls repulsive force. And it, uh, therefore, a lot of energy is needed yeah, to do so. So that is why that slippage in ceramic is not easy and this also makes ceramic very strong but it, it very strong means that they have very high young modulus usually uh, they, they are difficult to bend they are difficult to deform but when you apply larger and larger, larger force eventually you go above this certain threshold and it will just break without having any deformation so this is what we call as brittleness Okay, this is was another example of ceramic silicate ceramic, which is one of the most common ceramic we find on Earth, yeah? in the form of clay, clay for example, or in in on, the, on beaches, yeah? the, the sand itself is a kind of silicate ceramic. It is formed from silicon and oxygen. Oxygen. So silicate, one silicon is bonded yeah, or is surrounded by four neighboring oxygen atom. Yeah, to form uh, like a tetrahedral structure. The silicon itself um, releases four electrons to be silicon four plus uh, cation, while the oxygen captures uh, two electrons to become oxygen two minus anions. And this is one of the crystalline structure called as crystobalite. The silica <coughs> structures are the silica, yeah, silicon, uh, made from silicon and oxide can have structure different different uh, kind of structure you know, uh, similar like for example carbon can have uh, diamond carbon nanotube, carbon nanotube graphite graphene many things yeah? what we call as polymorphism yeah silica can have can be in the form of quartz crystobalite or three diamond quartz is for example the crystal the crystal structure that the, the electronics industry are using as oscillator usually inside your computer. Yeah, uh, maybe old computer usually has this quartz as the silica as the oscillator. Recent advanced computer may have different technology. The strong silicon oxide bond leads to a strong high melting material. Yeah, it's very difficult to melt silica yeah, above one thousand seven hundred degree. 1710 degrees Celsius. <clears throat> but when it is not in, 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 in crystalline structure, yeah, when it is amorphous, then it is softer. Yeah? For example, is silica gels. I believe that you are quite familiar with silica gels. Yeah? Usually, silica gels is put in uh, near the lens, yeah, near a smartphone, or near something to you. It, why? It, it can absorb. Uh, you may, uh, absorb water vapor easily so that it can reduce the humidity. So this is usually 
used in storage to store uh, devices, electronic uh, electronic instrumentation that are sensitive to humidity. So in silica gas or amorphous silica silicon dioxide, the silicon four plus and oxygen two minus, they are not in well ordered like this. So they have more random structure like this. They are still bonded with the same stoichiometry. Chemically, they are still the same silicon dioxide, but they are they do not have well ordered crystal lattice structure. The charge is balanced by hydrogen plus. Yeah, to form a hydroxyl functional group minus at the dangling bonds. Dangling bonds means at this uh, the edge of the of the, the of the bond. Yeah, usually at the edge here it has this uh, oxygen uh, OH minus the hydroxyl uh, functional group. While at the main main linkage, it is still made from silicon and oxygen. <clears throat> It has very high surface area, therefore, yeah, larger than 200 square meter per gram. It means high surface area means it has large porosity. Yeah, because of large porosity, if you see it under microscope, uh, under SEM, scanning electron microscope, you will see this porosity, porous structure. Silicon dioxide is quite stable, therefore, unreactive. And it makes good catalyst support. So many in research, current research, they use silica as the uh platform or the template uh to uh, we call it, uh, what we call it scaffold yeah to capture or to hold other other uh, material which will act as the active side of the catalyst silica gas yeah this is the dense form of amorphous silica the charge imbalance corrected with counter cation such as sodium plus Borosilicate glaze. Now, this is also maybe you are familiar with in your kitchen. Maybe you have Pyrex glass. Yeah, uh, also in the labs. Pyrex glass is when you drop it, it doesn't break easily, right? It has a harder, harder uh, mechanical properties compared to normal glass. It has better temperature stability and less brittle than sodium glass because of the additional boron. Uh, at, it is dope, dope, we call it dope with boron atom. That's why it is called as boron silicate glass. Silicates, <clears throat> yeah, this is another form of uh, silica. When the silica, uh, silicon dioxide uh, tetrahedra, with silicon, silicon tetrahedra, silicon tetraoxide, yeah, for minus, because it is not uh, balanced, it is not zero, the sum of the charges, by having them share corners, edges, or faces like this, and then they share this uh, oxygen, yeah, the two, and then they become the silicon, uh, the silicon, I don't know how to spell it, pronounce it, the chemical word, the silicon two oxygen seven, six minus, this is three, three silicon oxygen, oxygen, yeah, and calcium such as calcium two plus, magnesium two plus, and aluminum three plus act to neutralize yeah, to provide the ionic bonding. So this one it needs it is four minus. So the net charge is not zero yet. So this is neutralized by binding ionically to two magnesium atom, two magnesium cation. When each of the magnesium releases two electrons, okay, to become magnesium two plus, two of them will balance this four minus charge. In here, similarly, the six minus. So since uh, then it requires two calcium two plus yeah, four plus plus one magnesium two plus in total six plus also to balance. Or, or this one could could bind to aluminum two Se three Se three O nine. So yeah, as I mentioned in the earlier in the earlier part of this session that uh, due to this ionic capability that you could have very complex ceramics yeah, uh, that is made chemically from various elements like this, calcium, magnesium, silicon oxide. And that is why their property also will change. And ceramics can have interesting properties, varying interesting varying properties. Some ceramics are insulated, 
maybe more ceramics. But some can be very superconducting, superconductor, yeah, under under cold temperature or under high pressure. Carbon forms, carbon. So this, uh, I think, Andy and his group once mentioned about this yeah, in one of the assignment. So carbon black is amorphous, but it has only carbon at like a graphite structure where it has layers like this and no no binding between the layers. It is amorphous and the surface area will be large, about 1,000 square meter per gram. But when it when carbon binds in uh, as tetrahedral with tetrahedral structure, it will be hard like this, yeah, because there is no good slip planes. There is it cannot deform at all. Yeah, uh, <clears throat> but it is brittle. Tetrahedral carbon. When it grows large, then it use as it is usually used as jewelry. Small diamonds can be used as cutting tools, yeah, and polishing material. Yeah, for example, many of the drill bit is uh, covered with thin film of diamond. Diamond films can be made as hard surface coats or tools, also for medical devices. This is due to it's tetrahedral like uh, binding structure. That's why it's very strong. Maybe it may be the strongest material on earth is diamond. Therefore, there is a this proverb word diamond lasts forever. Yeah. And then that's why that now it becomes famous as a token or as a sign to be given uh, to your spouse. Yeah, when, but it is expensive yeah. because to 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 symbolize uh, for foreverness in yeah, something like that. When the carbon form as graphite, yeah, as I mentioned also earlier, that when there is no binding, no 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 covalent binding between layers, so it becomes like this, yeah, graphite it becomes a structure called this graphite layer structure, and the carbon, each carbon here only binds to three other carbon atoms. Yeah, while we know actually that carbon needs four. Uh, for 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 neighbor of carbon, the same carbon, in order that it completes the valence shell. Uh, but when it binds only to three, it has this one, uh, one pair of electron, yeah, which is the pi, the pi electron. We call it free uh, on uh, hanging on the on the on the perpendicular to the layer, and this makes graphite structure conductive. Yeah, as we know, yeah. pencil yeah, is graphite. It's made from graphite. Uh, you could uh, try to flow current along along the pencil, the graphite the material of the pencil, yeah, because of the pi electron between the layers. Because of this structure, also that yeah, be, uh, the layers, the, the binding between the layers are not covalent binding or ionic binding. They are just weak van der Waals force between the layer due to this uh, electron yeah, van der Waals because. The electrons are always moving, right? Sometimes here, sometimes there, sometimes there. So the binding is also not permanently strong. Uh, this makes graphite ideal for pencil, yeah? because in pencil, when your pencil attached to the paper, then some carbon layer, uh, some carbon atoms layer on the outer part will be released from the, the whole pencil material and binds to paper structure. Yeah. So, so planes slide easily and good lubricant is good lubricant. If we can isolate one single graphite layer, and this is what we call as graphene. Graphene uh, represent a single layer of graphite, basically. So actually, the early discovery of graphene by the Manchester University group, with Professor Lofoselo and Professor Game. Yeah is made by um what do you call it uh, tape scotch tape they make that scotch kit that capture a single layer of this graphene from a stack of graphite only now then they try to make it chemical so previously it was made with that physical method another form or another polymorph yeah, polymorph of carbon is fullerens and nanotube in fullerens, it makes a 
ball like this, yeah, what we call a sparky ball. But the, the chemically, it is still the same. One single car uh, carbon atom attached to three. Yeah. And fuller uh, uh, nanotube, carbon nanotube is also the same. One single atom carbon attached to three. But in carbon nanotubes, they form like this. It is basically like a graphite layer, a graphene layer, which is being wrapped yeah, into a tube like this, to the structure like this. And this is uh, Buckminster Buckmin Fullerens, which makes uh, it has a structure like a soccer ball, either say C60 or C70, depending on the number of atom of carbon atoms that makes up the ball. And this one carbon nanotubes is also conductive, yeah, because it still has that pi electron bonding. Okay, we mentioned in the pre, uh, in the beginning that ceramics can have defect structure as well. The defects, there are several types of defects. One is the Frankel defect. This is when a cation is out of place, like this. When there is supposed to be cation here, and instead it moves to uh, next to the other place, uh, the, the neighboring place of another cation. Another type is short key. Short key defect. This is when a pair of cation and anion vacancies. Yeah, there is a here, cation is missing, and here an, an anion is missing. So this is short key defect. The equilibrium concentration of the defects is proportional to this exponent minus QD divided by KT. A is the uh, Boltzmann constant, T is the absolute temperature, QD is the in diffusion, yeah, diffusion coefficient, something like that. So when we introduce impurity uh, into ceramics, the impurities also must satisfy the charge balance, which is the principle of electroneutrality. So for example, uh, with sodium chloride, yeah, salt, if we introduce a substitutional cation impurity, so we introduce, we replace sodium in, uh, instead with calcium two plus. Yeah? So since sodium uh, can only have one valence electron moving, yeah, so it means it to become sodium plus. When we want to introduce calcium two plus, then this calcium two plus has to replace two sodium plus ion. For example, uh, as a result, here when this calcium two plus ion replace one this one uh, sodium ion place, then to have charge balance to have electron neutrality, one of the sodium plus ion must also leave. Yeah, to so that the whole thing is the is stay neutral. As a result, then we will have a casual vacancy in this place. Similarly, when we have substitutional anion impurity, yeah, like this in sodium chlorine, yeah, we want to replace chlorine with oxygen. Oxygen, uh, when, the, in, when it becomes anion, it captures two electrons to become oxygen to minus. So when we introduce oxygen into to imp, uh, as an impurity, then it will it will replace to chlorine minus ion. So as a result, also this when this oxygen replace the, the, the chlorine, one chlorine will also leave, resulting in an anion vacancy defect. Okay. So what to how to measure the elastic modulus of ceramics if in metal, because metal has relatively lower Young's modulus. So it is quite, we can stretch metal. We can then measure the elongation, the, del, the, 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 the extension, the delta L. And then we can measure the strain. The force can also be measured. Then we can calculate the Young's modulus. Yeah, Young's modulus E equals to sigma divided by epsilon. But in with ceramics, yeah, it is very strong. The Young's modulus usually is very high. The room temperature behavior is usually elastic only, no plastic deformation with brittle failure. So if you stretch or you compress above certain pressure, it will just break, no deformation, observable. So to measure the elastic modulus, then we use a method called as a three-point bend test. Yeah, by bending, 
uh, test by bending um, stress. Yeah, because tensile stress, tests are difficult for brittle material. Two uh, points here are being supported by, let's say, yes, this triangular support, right? And a force is applied at the middle of the beam. Yeah. <clears throat> so this is D, then it will deflect the, the ceramics beam, yeah, the deflection, uh, midpoint deflection. Then we can calculate. We can draw the graph of the force as a function of the this deflection and the deflection, and the formula is calculated here from uh, this young modulus, yeah, F over delta, and the slope. This is the formula for the moment of inertia. I think it would for for the spending uh, stress, and we will have. The times L cubic divided by 4 B D cubic. D is the width and D is the thickness of the, um, if it is rectangular. If it is circular cross section, then L cubic divided by 12 pi R um, power 4. So the slope, the slope here will, the F over delta here, the slope is related with the Young's modulus. From here, then we can count, the, uh, the, the L is known, yeah, this from the preparation of the specimen, B known, D also known, then we can, we have the F over delta, then we can, uh, from the slope, yeah, this is the slope, F over delta, by putting into this formula, we have the Young's modulus. Then to measure the strength, yeah, this is the, when we put similarly with three point point test bending test, we put the force in the middle. The maximum tension will be at the bottom of the surface here at the middle. Yeah. Then we apply like this uh, force until it breaks. Yeah, until it breaks. Where this is the fracture force F F the fracture force and it is the Delta, delta, delta flexural strength. So the sigma of the the strength, yeah, the flexural strength, yeah, before it breaks, equals to 1.5 f f times l, the length of the specimen divided by b, the the width, and times d squared, the thickness of the of the the rectangular specimen, equals of it is if it is cross section. If it is a circular cross section, then the flexural strength equals to FF times L divided by pi r cubic. So here we see that the typical values of the some several material, the silicon nitride has the highest flexural strength, 250 up to 1000, and also uh, with relatively quite uh, high Young's modulus. 304 gigapascal. If we compare this with metal, metal usually, their Young's modulus range is in the megapascal range. Yeah. Silicon carbide is the highest, but quite high, but not that high. Aluminum oxide is the highest Young's modulus. And see here, the flexural strength is quite high also for silicon carbide and aluminum. Aluminum oxide. Glass has the Weakest uh, mechanical strength, yeah, only 69 of flexural megapascal flexural strength and 69 gigapascal. So, summary ceramics material could have covalent and ionic bonding. The structures are based on charge neutrality, yeah, and maximizing maximizing the number of the nearest oppositely charged neighbor, okay. The structure may be predicted based on the ratio of cation and anion radii, as we have discussed earlier. If the ratio is very small, it means the cation is very small, relatively very small compared to the anion, then you will have rock salt structure, sodium so rock salt structure. When it is almost similar, we could have AX crystal structure. When there is defects, the, de the charge neutrality must be preserved. The concentration varies exponentially. Yeah, with uh, the weight and also temp over temperature. At room temperature, the mechanical response is elastic, but fracture is brittle. 
negligible deformation. The deformation is very small. We have, for example, in silicon based strand gauge, we have polycrystalline or single crystalline silicon uh, strand gauge. Yeah. We can measure very small uh, dynamic range of the strain because they, they, they hardly deform. They hardly deform the silicon based strand gauge. Elevated temperature creep properties are generally superior to those of metals and polymers. Yeah. Creep means how the, uh, the mechanical structure be, uh, uh, change slowly with, with higher temperature. And with, with ceramics, it is superior because they have very strong, strong uh, binding. Yeah. Usually also their melting temperature is very high more than above 1,000 degrees Celsius, higher than metals and let alone polymers. Okay, so that will be all 